Questions 11 through 20 on the 2018 Grade 9 Pascal Math Contest. In the diagram, the circle graph shows how a baby polar bear spent 24 hours. How many hours did it spend playing? Well, 360 degrees minus 130 minus 110 would be the degrees that are assigned to playing, and that is 120 degrees. So 120 out of the total 360 degrees, which is one third, is really how much the playing section comprises of the entire circle. So the entire circle is 24 hours. So one third of 24 hours, which is eight, is how many hours the baby polar bear spent playing. So number 11, the answer is C. Glenda Helga, Iona, Julia, Carl, and Lou participated in the 2017 Canadian Team Math Contest. On their team uniforms, each had a different number chosen from the list 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Helga's and Julia's numbers were even. Carl and Lou's numbers were prime, and Glenda's number was a perfect square. What was Iona's number? Okay, Glenda's number is a perfect square, so obviously the only perfect square is 16 from this list. So Glenda is 16. The number. Uh, Carl and Lou's numbers were prime. The only prime numbers are 11 and 13, so we can assign those to Carl and Lou. There we go. Then Helga and Julia's numbers are even, so the only even numbers left are 12 and 14. So Helga and Julia will get 12 and 14. And the only number left is 15, so that must be the number for Iona. Number 12, the answer is D. A rectangle with height x and width 2x has the same perimeter as an equilateral triangle with side x10. What is the area of the rectangle? Well, the perimeter of that rectangle is 2x plus x plus 2x plus x, which is 6x. And they're telling me that is the same as the perimeter of the equilateral triangle. Triangle has side labeled 10, and because it's equilateral, all sides are the same. So 10, 10, 10. So that perimeter is 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 30. And they're saying that those two perimeters are equal. So this is equal to that. So 6x is equal to 30. And therefore, x will be 5. So what do they want? The area of the rectangle. OK, area of the rectangle is 2x times x, which is 2x squared. Substitute x equals 5. And you get 2 times 5 squared, which is 50. So number 13. The answer is B. In the list 7, 9, 10, 11, 18, which number is the average of the other four numbers? So you just got to fiddle around with this. There's no science here. And when you do, you find that 7 plus 9 plus 10 plus 18, if you take those four numbers, 7, 9, 10, and 18, and then take their average, you get 11, which is that other fourth, the the, the other number basically so it satisfies the question that which number is the average of the other four and that number is 11 so number 14 the answer is D a digital clock shows the time 456 how many minutes will pass until the clock next shows a time in which all the digits are consecutive and in increasing order well, I just used the answer choices. I thought, OK, well, instead of me trying to fiddle, fiddle around with this, I'm just going to go with the answer choices. I just added 458 minutes to 456. And when I did that, it brought me to a time of 1234. And as you can clearly see, this satisfies the condition that you have consecutive digits, and they're in, in increasing order. And they want how many minutes will pass until the next time so if it happens again we don't care so if the numbers are greater than 458 like these ones we don't really care because that would be after that so then I just did it for these two and it didn't work I think it gave 
uh, I don't I don't even remember, but I think 11, 12, and 10, 11, or something like that. And those are obviously not uh, consecutive numbers, and, and uh, they don't necessarily go in increasing order. So the one that worked for me is A, and that is the correct answer for 15. Reading from left to right, a sequence consists of 6 X's followed by 24 Y's followed by 96 X's. After the first N letters reading from left to right, one letter has occurred twice as many times as the other letter. The sum of the four possible values of N is. So we have 6 of these X's, and then we have 24 Y's, dot, 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 24 of those guys, and then 96 X's, so a whole bunch of X is at the end, 96, right? Okay, so we want a scenario in which one letter occurs twice as many times as the other, and there's only two letters, there's X and Y. So X and Y. Okay, let's talk about this. Let's say we chose all six of these guys. If I choose only three Ys, then that would mean that one letter appears twice as many times as the other. So how, what is n? n is basically the total number, which in this case would be 9. Another way of doing that, if I chose the first 6 x's and I chose 12 y's, in that scenario, one letter appears twice as many times as the other. Now what is the n in this case? 18. Correct? Because it's x plus y. And the number of total number of x's plus the total number of y's, I guess I can just put that in brackets. Now, let's say I chose the whole thing, all six X's, but all 24 Y's. If I choose another six X's, that would bring me to 12, and that is 12 to 24, which is, you know, 2 to 1 ratio, 24 to 12, I should say. So what's that now for N? That's going to be 36 for N. And then the other way of doing this is to have... Well, all 24 Y's, all of the first six uh, X's, and then choose 42, an, an additional 42 of these X's, because that would bring my total number of X's up to 48, which is twice 24. And that would give me a 2 to 1 ratio, and that total is 72. So now what they're saying, the sum of the four possible values of N, these are my four possible values of N, and when I add up 9 plus 18 plus 36 plus 72, I get 135. So number 16, the answer is C. Suppose that P and Q are two different prime numbers and that N is equal to P squared times Q squared. The number of possible values of N with N less than 1,000 is. Well, let's make a table and see what we get. And we, of course, have to pay close attention to the restrictions, which are n is less than 1,000. Okay, what are our prime numbers, first of all? Let's just make a quick list. 2, 3, 5, 7, 11, 13, 17, 19. I'm pretty confident we won't have to go farther than that. Okay, so let's make the list. We have n, p, and q. So n is equal to p squared times q squared. So let's start with the smallest. When p is 2, and they have to be different, okay? So three. If I do that, I get 36. How about two and five? That will give me 100. Two and seven, 196. Two and 11 would give me 484. Two and 13 would give me 676. Two and 17 would give me 1156. Oh, okay. So at this point, that's not good because n has got to be less than 1,000. So I've exhausted the twos. So that's done. So let's move on. Threes this time. Three twos has already been chosen up here. So that's already been done. So let's try three five. Three five would give me 225. Three seven. Let's try that one. That's 441. Three eleven. 311 is going to be 1089, and that is invalid because it's not within our range. Okay, so the threes are done. Now let's move on to uh, five, obviously. Five, uh, two and three are already been done, so let's try five and seven. That's 
one, two, two, five. So immediately that doesn't work. So I think we've exhausted everything. So how many did I get? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So seven possible values of n, number 17. Therefore, the answer is E. And the diagram PQR and triangle PQR has angle PQR equal to 120. Also, angle QPS is equal to angle RPS. And angle QRS is equal to angle PRS. What is the measure of angle PSR? All right, so based entirely on the question, this, if I call it x, this is also x. And very similarly, if that's y, this is also y. So from the big triangle, this big one, we can conclude that 2x plus 2y plus 120 is equal to 180. So x plus y plus 60 is equal to 90, and therefore x plus y is equal to 30. OK, so now we have to concentrate on this guy, this triangle, PSR. So this angle in here, I just call z. So x plus y plus z is 180, and therefore x plus y is 30, since we got that. And therefore z would be 180 minus 30, and therefore z is 150. So number 18, the answer is E. On Monday, Mukesh traveled 8 x kilometers at a constant speed of 90 kilometers an hour. On Tuesday, he traveled on the same route at a constant speed of 120. His trip on Tuesday took 16 minutes less than his trip on Monday. The value of x is speed is equal to distance over time, or time is equal to distance over speed. So on Monday, his TM, time on Monday, is x over 90. And on Tuesday, TT, I guess, is x over 120. And then they told me that if you compare TM to TT, TM would be TT plus 16 minutes, but I have to convert that to hours since we're talking in terms of kilometers per hour, so 16 over 60. So this is my equation. So x over 90 is equal to x over 120 plus 16 over 60. So this is what I have to solve. Um, yeah. Okay, let's uh, bring it over and get a common denominator here. 120, 120, 90, 90. And this is 16 over 60. So what's that? 30x over 120 times 90 is equal to 16 over 60. So cross multiply and get 30x and then times 60 is equal to 120 times 90 times 16. So when you do that math, x is 96. And therefore number 19, the answer is D. And the diagram PQR is, t is a pentagon. PQ is 8, QR is 2, RS is 13, ST is 13, TP is 8. Also, TPQ and PQR are 90 degrees. What is the area of the pentagon? We will break up this pentagon into a few sections. So the first one, this guy right here, that rectangle, then this triangle, and then, of course, the other triangle. And I will draw one more line that is going to hit there at a right angle like this. OK. And now at this point, I think it should be fairly straightforward to figure out the area. So this is an 8 by 2 um, rectangle right here. So that area, obviously, will be 16. This is, well, from here to here is 8. And from here to here is 8 minus 2, which is 6. So that is 1 half base times height, 1 half 8 times 6. So that is 24. So put that 24 right there. And then now, using Pythagoras, I can get the distance of TR. TR squared is just 6 squared plus 8 squared. So that's what? 100. So TR is 10. So let's just put that 10 right here, 10. So this, therefore, is going to be 5 since that is an isosceles triangle and the 
height would cut that side in half. So this would be 5. And now I can get the height, if I just call it h for height, h squared plus 5 squared is equal to 13 squared. So h is equal to 169 minus 25, h squared that is, and that's 144. So therefore, h is equal to 12. All right, h equals 12. OK, so the area of that triangle, this one right here, that can be calculated again, 1 half base times height. The base is 10, since that was 10. And the height I just got is 12. So that's going to be 60. So this is 60. So the total looks like this 16, total area, I should say, plus that 24, plus that 60. And that is equal to 100. And therefore, number 20, the answer is D.